My name is Junior Kuma, CEO of Zashi. I'll be taking out this time to explain to you how cross account access works for I didn't see some AWS. IAM is a very, very big thing on AWS, and majority of students, over about 90% of them, never understand what IAM does. They only understand users and policies, and when they get to rules, which is the most important, they get very confused. So, let's assume that you have two AWS accounts. You have account A, which has an AWS account ID, and you have account B, which has an AWS account ID as well. Let's say, for example, in account A, you have a user called John. So that is an IAM user called John. And in account B, you have resources in there, maybe an S3 bucket in account B. Maybe you have an EC2 instance. And let's say you have an LDS database in account B. So you're going to consider this account, account A, to be the identity provider account. We're considering this account to be the identity provider account because that is where the identity actually is found, which is John. In account B, you're considering it to be the resource provider because that is where your resources are actually deployed. Now ask yourself this question. Will you be able, will you be able to give a policy to this user called John to access these resources in account B? It's difficult. Why? Because Two accounts actually means they are different and they are isolated from each other. Now, AWS actually recommends that it's advisable to have your identities in one account. It is not good to have these identities created across different accounts, which makes it very, very difficult to manage the different identities. So in this scenario, what you're going to do is you have to make use of roles. You have to make use of roles. You need to create a role where you have your resources. You are going to create a role. For you to create that role, you need to establish a trust relationship between account A and account B. You need to establish a trust relationship while creating the role. This relationship is simply saying that account A is trusting account B and account B, which is a resource provider, is trusting account A. Inside of the role that you create, you are going to have the IAM policies. You are going to have the IAM policies, which you want the user John to be able to have permissions on when he access this account B. So, in this row, you are going to have permissions for the actions on EC2, permissions for the actions on S3, permissions for the actions on LDS. So, you are going to have those policies included as part of this of this role. Now, the question is, how would the user John in account A be able to make use of the role 
in accounts B. Is that possible? For this to work, you need to actually make use of the AWS service known as SCS. SCS is a service that gives temporal access to AWS resources. Remember, identities on AWS cannot have roles attached to them. And also, the identities in account A and there's another identity in account B, which simply means that this identity can automatically not just assume this identity here. So for that to work, you have to create a policy in account B, in account A, sorry. This policy is actually going to be an identity-based policy. And this policy is going to be of type known as SCS. So it's going to be an SCS policy, which gives temporal access. Now, what is going to be the content of that policy? That is the question. In that policy, normally, you are going to have the version, you are going to have the statement, and we recall that in the statement, you are going to have the SID, you are going to have the effect, you are going to have the action, which is going to be SCS, full actions, and the effect is going to be an allow, and you're going to have the resource. Now, the resource is going to be the ARN of the row in accounts B. That is actually going to be the resource. Now, why is the resource the ARN of the row? It's pretty much because when that policy is going to be attached to the user John, the user John will be able to make use of SCS or will be allowed to use SCS to be able to assume the role in account B. So when that is actually done, you are going to attach this policy to the user called John. When that policy is attached to the user called John, the user can now be able to assume this role in account B because the policy attached to the user is giving him um, temporal access to be able to make use of this role. So that is how you establish a trust relationship between both accounts where you have resources in one account and you have identities in another account. AWS has made it better. Instead of having to create all these roles and making use of IAM users and all that, AWS recommends the use of AWS SSO and that only works when you have AWS organizations enabled. Watch out for my next video and I'm going to be explaining that and how AWS SSO actually works. Thank you. Please subscribe to the channel for more videos and content.